He's a mad scientist. He told me he wants to do either culinary arts or design, and that's and nothing else. So it was a bit of tough time for me to understand because um, I wanted him to be to do something else. He was actually known as a gangster in the uni. He would pick a fight the, because that was his nature. Uh, looking back through recipes, well, basically I'm creating a menu that involves mostly from our local produce and um, our culture. Lah. To say is uh, where it is going is basically going for this uh, dinner. It's going to be called Reimagine Volume Two. So I did another Reimagine uh, three years ago. Um, so this is like just a follow-up on that and basically this dinner is about chefs expressing themselves like myself, I'm expressing myself, having fun, you know. So the vision for this dinner would be actually um, myself sharing stories through the menu. Every dish has to be interesting. Yeah, basically, it's like opening a new chapter in each book. The first one will be um, uh, mom's garden. So it li literally means my mom's garden. It, it goes back to when I was a kid, you know, when, I was, when, when we used to play outside and everything. I don't know why I had this this um this thing about trying stuff, you know, like tasting. Ah, you know what? Actually, it reminds me. I think it's because of uh, a cartoon when the duck went and uh, uh, put salt on the rose and ate it. And I, I, I don't know it. It looks so appetizing to me. So I, I think that was one reason why I started to <laughs> eat flowers. I, I, I think it must be because uh, of the influence of TV, uh, where you suddenly have a lot of uh, programs on cooking and culinary arts and all that. And perhaps he see himself as a Becoming a chef, I'm not sure. I personally wanted him to be doing something else, but he was so persistent. And I think it was uh, a passion that he really, is something that he really wants to do. And the winner, Achan Lipat. Until you're up to maybe 18, 
21, even sometimes until when depends on the, on the person lah, where you do not really know what you want, you want a lot of stuff, so you're just like, okay, let me, let me try everything and pick one. Well, he applied to do law for a while, but uh, you know, he didn't like it and he kept on saying he didn't want to do it and at the end of the day, I think he was just there for one, one year, one year plus. So, um, the whole incident where his father signed him up for law school. So he did one year of law and practically flunked everything. Because I knew something was up and I asked him, you know, what's up, you know. And from there, realized that it was really not something he could do. I think somewhere around that point, uh, I told myself, like, you know, I'm just going to do what I like. I kind of told you, tell your dad that, tell your parents that, tell them what you want to do. Uh, because of his insistence on doing culinary art, I have to let go and uh, allow him to pursue his passion. I think prepping the table would be easy, just make it all straight, make it, uh, what's it called? Long house spoon style lah. So everybody sitting together, you know, strangers talking to each other. Ta -da. I think it's gonna be a easy night, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, the second starter is called uh, Doesn't Matter If You're uh, Yellow or Purple. Um, it's supposed to be a grilled um, eggplant with um, a terong asam cheese on top. Uh, and basically it's uh, just showing that, you know, like, we have quite a different variety of uh, vegetables. Huh? And also I want to show the flavours, like, what's different with this? Why is it called the wrong when sometimes it tastes different, you know? He's a mad scientist. He's a mad scientist. He, he looks at um, traditional cooking. He looks at traditional uh, ingredients adds his little twist to it. So it's kind of like this, this mad scientist in, in the kitchen, I think. Um, I used to remember that I, I, whenever I feed my dogs, I would actually like, even though it's just canned food, I'll just take it, take it put it in the pot, and just cook it like a gourmet dog food, you know? And, and then we realized that He's kind of like this innovator, he, this guy who was willing to try out different things with what he had. Uh, being in Orang Ulu, uh, my mom's kaya, my dad's Lumbawang, the, I, I think our ancestors were, were all nomads. So they just travel around and wherever they go, they'll use whatever the, uh, the earth gives them. It's basically um, taking whatever that's available, whatever is given to you, and then making something good out of it. You can't tell Achang what to do. You can just tell him, okay, Achang, these are the ingredients. Tell me what you want to do. You know? And you just have to trust him. Boy. If I'm not mistaken, the first practical class in the kitchen, the chef was like telling us to do, to make something. I look at the ingredients and of course there's like a hundred things you can do. That's from the book, you know. It. I'm going to, I'm going to just make something totally weird and different and see how it goes. Lah. So, of course it turned out bad. It's like, all my, all my, all my years teaching, uh, 
like why why did you do this i'm like i, I don't know i just i want to try it um the third dish which is the third starter melanau meets espanol So, because when I was in Australia, when I was in the Spanish restaurant, uh, they have this uh, uh, this dish, uh, ceviche. Uh, yeah, it was surprisingly exactly like umai, just that the way they make it is different, you know. Uh, so this is basically just me trying to tell people that we are actually um, the same as you know other places like this, uh, like Spain. Thereafter, finishing, he got his diploma proceeded to Sydney. He actually paid his way to school. He found the funding, he found the school, um, and all that. So then one day he told me, oh Mac, um, I'm going to Australia. So basically it's more about not being under a shell. You know, like the saying says, uh, jangan jadi, what? Lembu bawah tempurung. Eh, bukan kata. Sorry, sorry. Jangan jadi kata bawah tempurung. Uh, don't, don't, don't just be so comfortable under your shell. So it's about broadening uh, the mind. Don't be too comfortable with what we are. Basically, why is it important? Is because I, I, I don't know how to answer it, but you know, I think it's um, because food is very, it's close to us. You know, it gives a culture a face. It might be the same as other country, your dish, but you know, it's basically your story. Like, who has a right to tell you that your story is wrong? So then we go to the fourth one. It's called uh, Highland Comfort. It's basically the uh, tengayan soup, which is the uh, wild leaf that you can only find in uh, high altitude places. In this dish, it's not only the soup, it's going to be also uh, long spado rice, uh, my dad's kampong, uh, where we had, have paddies, uh, main to uh, risotto. And on top of it will be just a pan seared uh, tilapia. Whenever I think about it or whenever I eat it, it's, uh, it, it brings this sense of, you know, like peace, you know, tranquility. And, you know, it's, it's going to be there on, on, the, on the dining table uh, prepared by your, my, my grandmother or grandfather. And, uh, yeah, you just sit down as a kid, you know, eat. Yeah, my parents, uh, they, were, they were basically farmers. We have uh, big plots of farms, uh, like other uh, uh, people in the village. I remember like my grandfather coming back or my grandmother coming back from uh, from the forest, you know, they'll be they'll be clearing out stuff and then they'll, they'll find something and they forage it, come back to the house, then they'll cook it. And then that's way uh, when I think back about uh, food, like traditional food when I was a kid, it's more like a comfort food, you know, it's, uh, it's more like uh, a pleasant memory. My children go to, uh, went to Long Smother those days during holidays. They are always very happy because uh, unlike in the town where we are staying now, it's very different there. Okay, Chang, your fish? Where's your fish? Okay. Yeah. You, you think you fish? Uh? Okay, uh, run, where's your fish? It's a free for all kind of thing when they were kids, so it's uh, very interesting because there's no fence, there is no um, limitation, you can just go anywhere.
but in my mind, it's like, why did I love this as a kid? You know, maybe it's because of, maybe because of uh, the act, you know, lack of my grandparents cooking for for us. The act of uh, they went foraging for the leaf. The act of you know, they always have it prepared every time before we wake up in the morning. And uh, I think it's important that we, as uh, native, in, uh, I think we do not forget our roots. Lah. Yeah. I, I, so, all right, I think someone asked me before about how do you classify something that's authentic? I would say that it's not really the flavor, it's not really in the method of cooking, it's more of the act of doing it. So it's not about uh, I want to make this into a new type of vegetable. I want this. I want to make this. Uh, I want to destroy the old way of life and make a new way of life. No, no, no. It's it's more about I want to uh, I want to innovate so that people can have a a, a, a chance to you know have the old one uh, taste exactly the same and everything just uh, interpreted differently. Whatever I do. I always, uh, the, the, I always keep the story behind it. Even sometimes flavors change, but the story behind it is always the same. The last one, which is the last dessert, is called Guess Who. So it's basically tapioca leaf ice cream. It's a very similar flavor with uh, matcha green tea after you dehydrate it. For this, I'm quite intrigued about the flavor. Like I just break my head into like tapioca leaves, you know, and everything, uh, just to find out, you know, okay, like how can I make this into a product that you know I'm 100% sure that it's uh, going to work, plus it's safe to eat. Daerah Sibu dan Kuching diistiharkan berstatus merah pada Ahad. Ia berikutan sejumlah 44 kes jangkitan tempatan dilaporkan di daerah Sibu dan 41 kes di daerah Kuching dalam tempoh 14 hari lepas. Terdapat 5 kluster COVID-19 yang masih aktif di Sarawak. Sementara itu, Menteri Kerajaan Tempatan dan Perumahan Datuk Si Dato Sim Hui Hian mengingatkan orang ramai untuk mengadakan makan malam di rumah sendiri berbanding berkumpul di restoran. Beliau menggesa orang ramai untuk mengurangkan aktiviti luar buat sementara waktu. Uh, so during this pandemic, you know, you rather you rather lose small financially, you know, rather than lose like the bigger picture. So the dinner is the dinner is cancelled for you know safety precautions and you know it's not all lost.
So it's going to be like a long house style. It's going to be long, where everybody is seated uh, like face to face, you know, and uh, you know, just one table. So there's a there's this communal feeling to it, lah. Because basically they're going, they they are going to be eating on the same table, you know. So sometimes people say that your true self, you know, shows when you're uh, having a meal. Selamat hmm. kembali ke lain cerita santai bersama anda. Hari ini kita tidak buat apa apa. Hmm. Okay. Doing things the way I do. Uh, it's never easy. Uh, it's not only A, B, C, there's always D, E, A, and Z, you know. I was trying to find my, uh, my own flavor, find my own uh, niche, uh, uh, my own taste. Because everybody will be like, oh, why, why do you do this this way? You know, there's already a good way. You know, why fix what's not broken? But I guess for people like me, they will go and say, why not make better what's already good? Remember that one year, he was in law school? He was actually known as a gangster in his uni. <laughs> right? He would pick a fight. Yeah. Because that was his nature. He's very aggressive. But then when that kind of energy is channeled properly, you can create wonders with it. When I was uh, from four or from three, when it was a career day on, in school, so at first I was thinking, you know, oh, I, I would like to be a chef because I like to eat. But then after a while, you know, it goes, it, it, it's more than that. When you look at Acha as a fighter, the, his very nature is such that um, he doesn't give up easily. But it's more about creating. I uh, like it gets it it, it 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 opens up this world of wonders to me, lah. Like bread, like how can you what flour, water, you just pop bread, you know, like. So yeah, it, it became like an obsession, lah.